Welcome back to Wolfpack Ranch. We're gonna do today what is the queen of all dishes as far as I'm concerned. The, uh, if the beef loin is the king, a great seafood covered paella is the queen. I ate this dish a lot in, in Spain when I was there. I tell you that I didn't particularly like the way they cooked the dish in Spain, strangely enough. They, every place I had it was cooked all together, all the flavors were blended, and, and you didn't get the individual taste of all the wonderful seafood and the chicken and whatever else they put in. But I like to have great chunks of things so, so you taste all these wonderful subtle flavors. We're gonna do some short grain rice, and we're gonna do some chicken. We're gonna brown it a little bit. We're gonna do uh, the seafood, the last addition to the dish. We're gonna put in that classic chorizo. We're gonna use some saffron. This is consequently not an inexpensive dish. This is a dish that you wanna do for uh, for somebody who you're trying to uh, show off for. Uh, as you'll see when we finish, this will be beautiful. I'm cooking this for eight. I've got a normal size paella pan. They come in all sizes, by the way. Okay, to do this dish, we're going to start with some chicken. Baste that in a little uh, flour. Let's get some fire going here. Okay, we're going to throw these little garlics in this hot oil. We're going to just Drove our chicken in the, in this back with the smart cook we have it over here. If I can keep from catching my favorite plate on fire, which I've been known to do. Keep things a little more exciting around the kitchen. That's why I keep a fire extinguisher just outside the door. I'm happy to say I've never had the opportunity or the occasion to use it. I got a couple of legs here and the rest thighs because they're nice and meaty and you could cut some chicken breast in half and do them if you prefer the white meat. I like the nice juicy meat. Okay, I cheated a little bit, had a little garlic salt in that flour already, but I'm going to touch it again. Just to make sure that we've got plenty of garlic in our diet. All those good antioxidants. Things to keep us healthy and long lived. Okay. What we have here is a big chunk of chorizo. I'm going to half it. And when that chicken's done, browning. I'm going to drop it in the skillet. We're going to bring it to the brown, get it mixed up, get the flavors all in the in what little grease I'm going to leave in the bottom of that pan. And then we're going to drop in our burial, the short, short grain rice. We're going to brown it a little bit and then we're going to start adding some chicken stock that I have in the can here but you can make out of chicken bouillon cubes and water if you prefer. And we're going to bring that rice up a ways. We're going to throw it all in the oven after that. Uh, rice and chicken and chorizo uh, and a couple of vegetables maybe. I'm going to mix in some pimentos and olives and, and things that uh, I don't see in a lot of recipes that I have to like in there. Plus more Spanish and a good black olive and a pimento. We're going to bake it a while, 30-40 minutes in there so we know we got our chicken done. And then we're going to start combining our seafood. We've got wonderful clams, mussels, some scallops that I'm going to brown because I happen to like them that way. Uh, hard to brown the scallops, and in my opinion, a lot of people mess up because they don't get them dry enough. you got to get them in, the, in between some paper plates and you got to press all the water out of them to get them to brown nicely and a little bit of butter. We also have some beautiful crab legs here. I'm going to section those up a little bit. Okay, I think that we have our chicken Coming along, so it's got just a little bit of crisp to it. We're going to put cut that aside, and we're going to let it drain. Get a little bit of grease off of it. 
Not that this rice won't absorb all these trees. It's just whether or not you want that much in your diet. When I say grease, it's mostly olive oil. Now, chorizo. This we're going to want to bust up into smaller pieces. Some chorizo comes fairly hard and you can slice it up. I have not used that. What you find in the, in the market is just like this. You'll find that this is going to darken everything up. And this oil and what a wonderful uh, aroma is coming out of that pan right now. I guess that's really what makes this a signature Spanish dish. This is that wonderful, 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 wonderful treatment. Okay. Let's go to work here. I don't think we've got to wait any longer. There's one cup of Mario short grain rice. There's the second cup. And I'm on it. Look at that bit. It's beginning to color out. Isn't that pretty? Bass country a little bit, which was wonderful. The food there, of course, is grand. I ate a lot of bass food in my life. Uh, being raised around in sheep country, you find that, that a lot of bass folks came over here. And there's wonderful names like Echeverria and, and Noriegas and uh, those those kinds of names that came from the. the Basque, which is the people that's located uh, actually between Spain and France in the Pyrenees Mountains. They're of a unique language, no romantic or Germanic or any other kinds of roots to it. It's in and up to itself. They, of course, think they ought to be an independent country. We spent a lot of time in Barcelona. I think that's about right. So now we're gonna make the rice into rice. As rice should be. It will cook down and retain some of that wonderful chicken flavor in the rice. We're gonna get it off a high, we're gonna get it down. A little bit less medium. And we're going to let it cook. Now we're going to have to add chicken stock to this as we go along because it will cook it out. It's not cooking it out, not absorbing it. You're doing something wrong. And what a bunch of wonderful flavors we're going to have all put together in one package. Don't you dare go away. I'll be right back. Okay, you need to get these scallops good and dry and get all the water out of them. You have to do this two or three times. Unfortunately, the scallops that we get out of the markets are usually put in a little water. Not that that would add any weight and add to their profit margin, but they've got a little water in them. Uh, the scallops that are sold at restaurants generally are fairly dry. So one of the reasons you see all those beautiful, nicely brown scallops in restaurants is that they start with a dry product. You don't have to start with a soaking wet one like those of us at home now that I'm a home cook. We also have some beautiful crab legs here. I'm going to section those up a little bit. After I get these good and hot, I will take them out and crack them down all the way down one end so they're easily 
easy to get out of the uh, shelf for those good folks. This is a finger food meal, believe me. This is not not one that you're going to uh, going to eat without getting a little bit messy, unless you don't have near as much fun eating it as I do. I love the story of uh, the spider crabs and the fact that the folks in Alaska years ago couldn't figure out how to sell their crabs, so they called a marketing guy up there and he said, let's, uh, let's name them king crab. Same thing ha happened in New Zealand. They had a wonderful nice white fish down there called the New Zealand slime fish. And uh, they said, that doesn't sell too well, the New Zealand slime fish, so let's call that orange roughy. A lot of our uh, enjoyment of food is in the perception, and that perception starts with what it's called, I guess. You can see that this is starting to absorb, starting to cook down. We don't want it to cook quite all the way because we're going to put it in the oven for a while. We want to put it in the oven for a while and let this chicken get good and done. Then the fun really starts with the seafood and, and combining it. We're going to add one zucchini to it just for because I like a little green color in there. We're going to add the pimentos to it before we put it in the oven. The zucchini after we get it out of the oven. Because that zucchini would just cook to pieces. Yeah, that's about to almost totally absorbed when I put it out. And as well, the wonderful chorizo flavor. We're going to do a little more of this chicken broth. Let it cook a little bit longer. And then we're going to add the royal of all spices, which is saffron. Now, this, you could say it's as valuable as gold, but that couldn't be true. I think it's worth its weight in diamonds, actually. I don't know how many thousands of little flower stamens there are, or whatever they baby together, but if that's not pretty, I don't know what. I put about half of this $7 bit of saffron in there, which is maybe a hundredth of an ounce because it doesn't weigh anything. But boy, what a wonderful bouquet. If that were a bottle of wine, you'd have to pay a lot of money for it. Gotta cook some. Still pretty crunchy. Even the oven would finish it off now. Doesn't look like a whole lot now, but if we dress her up, she's going to be pretty as a sunny Sunday morning. If you don't have the better part of three hours, don't start this one. But sometimes the end result's worth the effort and the time invested. This is a dish that requires attention. I think we're about ready to hit the oven. Just a little bit of, of dente left in there. But first, first, let's add some olives. I'm going to drain these pimentos just a wee bit. And let's add a good half cup of pimentos. That's one little jar. That's going to make it pretty.
Well, it doesn't matter coincidence. I'm gonna pop him in the oven. We're gonna leave him there for 30 minutes or thereabouts. Turn that off, that off. Heaven. I'm going to do some seafood in this pot of pre-salted water that I've got going. You can buy crab oil. It has lots of wonderful spices in it. Or you can spice up your own. I don't uh, think there's any magic formula to this. I'm going to throw a little garlic salt in there. I'm going to throw some oregano in there. I'm going to throw a little cumin in there, out of deference to our Latin friends and the basis of this dish. That's probably uh, a quarter teaspoon of cumin, a little more maybe, and uh, maybe a half teaspoon of oregano. I've got a little Italian seasoning here, and I'm going to put one teaspoon of Italian seasoning in that water. And we're going to let it just uh, steep for a minute and get to be a, a wonderful flavor. Okay, this dish generally doesn't call for these little zooks, but I happen to like the, the color that we're going to get from them. Not that we're going to be able to see them until we dig down in there. Whoops, everything's going away. They don't take very long. We've got about 10 minutes to go here. So I'm gonna just slip that back in there and close her back up. Since we've got about 10 more minutes to go, we're gonna drop this crab in. Of course, it comes already cooked generally, so it doesn't have to be cooked, but it does have to be heated through and through. This dungeon is gonna go right on the top. He too is going to be heated through and through, depending on that luck at all. It won't take nearly as long to do these mussels, and the shrimp, nor the clams than it will the crab. Okay, we got our base dish of, uh, of rice and chicken going in the oven, being finished off. We've got our crab both the Dungeness and the King Crab cooking in here, just getting warmed up. We're going to brown and finish off our scallops. All this is start coming together about the same time with any luck at all. You want to brown those little beauties. Get a little lemon here to top the whole thing off because everything likes better lemon except maybe ice cream. A little, uh, little butter going here. These beautiful, spectacular scallops. Do this whole dish by count. Get a couple of shrimp for each people. I got one scallop for each. Got three mussels and a couple of clams and a piece or two of crab. As soon as we get a hot fire, nothing in here but butter. Hopefully these are dry enough to brown. We're gonna find out. I'm gonna get a little sizzle to them. Like all that fish, you only want to cook it till it loses its translucence. Of course, these scallops aren't very translucent. So until they change to a nice, pretty white all the way through. And they're done as done can be. I'm going to top these just a little bit of paprika to give them a little color and make them not look quite so anemic. You really want to brown with the salisa flour on. Just use a little touch of one around them and just make them a little bit more, a little bit freer. Now you got to make sure you cook the flavor of the flour out. OK, 
Okay, in go the shrimp. Okay, those guys are coming along. They got a little brown to them. I'm gonna just touch them with a little bit of lemon. That wonderful refreshing flavor. And I'm gonna knock those off the fire. Turn that fire off. I'm gonna get my shrimp out of here because they are done. You can see they're colored up nicely. Oh, is that pretty or what? I knew there was another one hiding down there. Get out of there. There he comes. Okay. I think I can actually get this crab out of there now. It's been in a good boiling water for 10 minutes. This Dungeness is fighting back. He thinks he's found a home in there. Shellfish, ha ha, there's a hideout shrimp in there. He'll cook in there at the same time. Somebody would have been mad at me if they only had one of the shrimp. Just to color it up and make it pretty. Let's take our tongs and place these guys around. I'm going to use just a little bit of that nice butter. pretty. I don't know what is. I'm going to just touch her all with a little bit of lemon. And we're going to find us a bunch of plates and a bunch of happy folks that are ready to eat and dish them up. Sure nice to have you here at Wolfpack Ranch. Uh, come on out and join us anytime and I'll feed you real good, I promise. Bye-bye. Hugs to you and yours.